can watch these whenever you want. So what I'm doing right now is I'm just killing a little time for Jason to get down to the basement. Um, don't forget that when I make any suggestions about what we're going to do, it's a suggestion, it's not a demand. So if it's inappropriate for your body because of injuries, surgeries, arthritis, or you just are tired and you want to take a breather, take a breather. So we're going to start as we usually start in a seated position. You can sit in a chair, butt forward, feet flat, floor lined up like the number 11, uh, or you can sit on the floor like I am in a lotus, half lotus kneeling position. Once you get your lower body organized, roll your pelvis forward so that you come up on your sits bones. And that makes it easy for you then to pull in your abs, lift your breastbone, and there you are. So let's close our eyes for a few seconds and just take inventory. How are you doing today? How are your sinuses? How's your digestion? How are your joints? How's your mood? And opening our eyes, we can extend our arms, inhale up. And then two fountain breaths. Good, let that go. And let's say good morning to one of our shoulders with a big forward circle. And let's go backwards. We'll get the juices flowing. Good. Let that go. And we'll do the other shoulder. Good morning, shoulder. And go backwards. If you have flat spots, it's something to notice. We don't have to worry about it. And then let that go. All righty. So let's push away our imaginary wall. Really push right from the middle of your back, elbows straight, hands fanned out, broad as they'll go, good. Make a soft little fist, point it at the floor, almost at the ceiling. And then back to the wall, then index finger to thumb and squeeze, second, third, and fourth. Backwards, fourth, third, Second and first, good. Let that go and we'll play a few, few piano scales, giving every little joint an opportunity to flex. And then palms up and just let your hands gently flop to stretch the inside of your wrist. If this causes pain, don't do it. Good, we'll let that go. Just turn now and look over your right shoulder. Come back to center and look over your left shoulder and come back to center, good. So let's use our nose as a pointer and we'll draw the figure eight on its side, just like this, and then go backwards. We're saying good morning to the top three vertebra of our neck. And when you're ready, come back to center, good. So let's do the cat and cow stretch. Your head is coming forward, your belly is going backwards, and you're exhaling down. As you inhale, you come up, lift your breastbone, and look up. Going back and forth at your own speed. Exhaling down, inhaling up. Good, all righty, so we'll let that go. and Let's do the stir the pot. So we keep our spine fairly straight and we're just drawing a circle as if we were using a wooden spoon in a bowl. And the bowl is our pelvis. Be sure to go backwards sooner or later. And when you're ready, come back to center. Once again, sit up nice and straight and tall. Let's reach up and pick a few apples. I'll take that one, that one. Every time you reach up, reach as tall as you can be right from your sides. 
all the way. Good. When you're finished with that, give everything a nice little wiggle, take a breath. So let's finish the job of loosening up our spine. We're going to work on the middle of our neck now. So sitting up straight and tall, lifting your breastbone, allow your chin to approach your chest, but don't let your chest sink. When it goes, when your chin is as low as it's going to go, just pause, wait, and breathe. And sure enough, the big muscle across the top of your shoulders will begin to loosen. And your chin goes down another millimeter or two or three, whatever it has to available. And then roll your right ear to the right, looking at the wall opposite. And pause and focus on the left side of your neck, which is beginning to open. When you're ready, you can nod a slow and gentle yes. Notice how that changes the way the left side of your neck feels. When you're ready, roll your chin back to the middle and over to the left. Once again, keep your breastbone up, but now your left ear is looking at your left shoulder, and you should focus your attention over here on the right. To notice how that is opening the right side of your neck. And slowly nod a little yes. Once again, noticing how that changes the way the right side of your neck is feeling. And when you're ready, you can roll your chin to the middle and over to the right, back to the middle, over to the left. And this is just a slow and gentle swinging motion. Keep breathing. And when you've had enough of this, you just come back to center and sit up. And there we are. Take a breath. <sighs> Good, okay. So let's do a seated spinal twist. So the folks on the floor should stretch their legs out. The people in chairs, you should leave your lower body exactly where it is because it's just fine. But if you're on the floor, it's right leg over left, left arm to right knee. Everybody sit up straight and tall. Use your hands on the floor or the chair to help you pivot and breathe. Make sure your chest is lifted your abs are engaged, and don't let your left shoulder try to sneak around to the right because that would close your chest, and we want to keep it open. Keep breathing. Now, we've been here long enough so that we should be able to twist back a little bit deeper and release it. Come back to center, give everything a wiggle, and see, feel how it sorts back into its normal place. And then if you're on the floor, it's left to right, right arm to left leg. Everybody sit up straight and tall, pivot to your left, use your hands on the floor of the chair to help you pivot, and breathe. Engage your abs, make sure your chest is still lifted, look behind you. Keep breathing. We are not only twisting our spine, which is a very good thing for it, we're also wringing out your viscera, squeezing out the old fluid so the new fluid can come rushing in. Twist back a little bit farther and release it. Come back to center. Once again, feel how your back is reorganizing itself and let that go. Take a breath. Okay, so let's all sit, bring our arms straight out, and then bend our elbows so we look like a squirrel cactus, 
and we'll let one hand come down and then the other one come down. The challenge in this posture is to always keep your elbows up at shoulder level. It takes both muscular work and attention. Keep breathing. Last time. Good. Let that go. Give everything a little shimmy. All right. So let's make our little hooks for our hands. Put your hands together. Keep your shoulders down and pull. It's a nice sustained pulling. We're using the strength of our arms in opposition to one another. And breathe. It's like using weights. Let go of that. Now this time we're going to push. So you can either do it in prayer position, you can put your knuckles together, either way works perfectly well. And push. Again, it's a nice sustained pressure. We're using the muscles, typically work in opposition to the muscles you just used. Breathing. Good, let that go. So we're gonna go back to the little hooks, put them together and pull. We are seriously activating all of the muscles of our upper torso. Good, let that go. We're gonna go back to the push position and push. Do you notice that one way is easier than the other? Just something to notice, not something you have to do anything about. Anyway, take a breath. And we'll let that work and effort go. Let's see if there's anything else we want to do while we're down here. No, I think we've probably done enough for the moment. Oh no, let's do exaggerated chewing. So, everything opens and closes. Eyes, nose, mouth, stretch open, squeeze up, chew on the left, chew on the right. Make your chin go in a circle. Go backwards. And when you have had enough of that, you just take a nice deep breath, let your face relax, and give it a feel. It feels probably pretty stimulated, which is a good thing. So, I think it's time for the frog. Let's do the frog. Today, I'm going to do it from the chair. I'm going to turn the chair sideways so that you can see that I'm really well forward with the chair. And I'm nowhere near the back of the chair. I've got my feet spread nice and wide. I've got my hands on my knees. Now, I'm going to sit up straight and tall because I don't want to go down like a bent noodle because that stretches my back. I don't want that. I want the, all the stretch to come out of my hips. So I have to keep my head and chest up so I have a nice flat back. And then I just lean forward. And I keep going until I find resistance. When I find some resistance, I breathe encouragement into my hip joints and tell them it's okay. This is weird, unusual, but it's not a problem. If you can reach down and put your hands on the floor, floor, that's fine. But if you can only bring your fingertips to the floor, that's dangerous. You're much better off leaving your hands on your knees and breathing. Now, when you're ready to come out of it, it's a simple matter. You can just sit up or push a little bit on your knees to help you. And there you are. So let's stand up. We'll get our equipment out of the way. Let's start in Tadasana. Now what that means is we're putting our feet into the number 11 instead of our typical heels together, toes apart. So now my feet look like the number 11 and they should be hip width apart. If you don't know what that means, just put your two fists together Plant them on the floor between your feet. That's hip width. All righty. So now, feel the floor. Make sure the bottom of your foot 
every part of it is doing its fair share of holding you up. So now you can pull yourself up through your ankles and legs. You can tuck your pelvis a little bit and you can really pull in your abs as you lift your breastbone, asking your shoulder blades to slide down your back, balancing your head beautifully on your neck. And there we are in Tadasana. Take a deep breath. This is the posture that gives you maximum lung capacity, which enables your body to feed and cleanse, feed and cleanse. We are successfully defying gravity. So let's bring our arms out, interlace your fingers and notice which one is on top. Reverse, stretch, Bring your hands behind your back, interlace again, send your hands as low as they'll go, and lift into chest expansion. Ah, feel that lovely stretch across your chest. Release that, let that go. Bring your arms out again. This time when you interlace, make sure the other finger is on top. Reverse, stretch, bring your hands behind your back, interlace the unusual way. Send them as low as they'll go and lift. Now this should feel just a little bit different than the first time. Good, and release it. Shake out your legs, let that work and effort go. All righty, so it's time for a power pose. I think it's time for warrior two. So for warrior two, we would like a chair nearby particularly in front of you. If you have any doubts about your balance, putting the chair in front of you is a good thing. Behind me is not going to do me any good or probably won't do me any good, but I don't want to put it in front of me. So you'll have to imagine. So I'm going to spread my feet. You can spread your feet as much or as little as you want, both toes facing forward. Now I'm going to take my left toes, I'm going to rotate them to the left, 90 degrees, and I'm going to bend my left knee so it's lined up over my left ankle, and I have my left shin is perpendicular to the floor. My right leg is straight. But right now, if I put my hands on my hips, my hips are facing over there, and I really want them to come back to the starting position of facing that way without dragging my left knee away from my left ankle. There I am. I am in warrior two when I bring my arms out left and right, and there I am. Now you can stay here looking out over your left arm and breathing and feeling the power of this posture. If you want, you can do triangle pose. All you have to do is this. And when you get down as low as you want to be, you can rest one of your, your left arm against your left knee and breathe. Or as I said, you can stay in warrior two. This is the triangle pose we started in warrior two. Either pose is an excellent way to start the day. When you're ready to come out of it, return to warrior two. Step onto your left foot, shake out your legs, take a nice breath, give everything a loosening wiggle. Good. So, of course, asymmetrical poses, we do them twice. So once again, I'm spreading my feet as much or as little as is good for your body. Taking my right toes, turning them to the right 90 degrees, and lining up my right knee over my right ankle. Now, once again, if I put my hands on my hips, I can see that they're facing that way. But I want to bring them back over here, which is tricky, because I don't want to get my right knee away from my right ankle. But once I'm there, and I stretch out my arms, and I look out over my right arm, I'm in warrior two. And this is a lovely place to be, unless you're interested in doing the triangle pose. If you want to, you can do the triangle pose. Either pose is just wonderful. 
and it's your yoga practice, so you get to make the decision as to which one you'd like to do. Whatever you're doing, make sure you're still breathing. That's critical. When you've had enough of this and you're ready to come out of it, if you're in triangle, you simply return to warrior pose and then bring your arms down, step onto your right foot, take a deep breath, roll your shoulders, shake out your legs, and do whatever loosening movements will feel good. Okay, so it's time, I think, for an inversion. Inversions are very good for us because if they get our heads below our hearts, but if you have glaucoma, high blood pressure, don't do it. Take a break. Um, if you have low blood pressure, you simply need to be aware of the fact that you should stand up slowly because you might get lightheaded. All right, so we're putting our feet right back into Tadasana and standing up nice and straight and tall. Now we're going to go down not as a wet noodle, but once again with a flat back until we're parallel to the floor. We'll stretch forward out of our pelvis and then relax. So here we go. Stretch forward, relax your back, and there we are, hanging upside down for some reasonable facsimile thereof. Feel the muscles up and down the backs of your legs as they begin to stretch and breathe encouragement into them. Check in with your neck. If the top of your head is not pointed at the floor, your neck is trying to hold up your head. Ask it to relax. Then twist around to the right and take hold of whatever you find over there. Keep breathing. But notice how different this feels over here. Then come back to center, twist to the left, take hold of whatever you find over there. Keep breathing. And once again, notice how the stretch feels very different. When you're ready to come out of it, come back to center, put your hands on your thighs, come up to a flat back, and stand up. There we go. Once again, give everything a nice wiggle, shake out your legs, and let that work and effort go. Okay, so let's see, what would we like to do next? I think Renice's favorite move would be a good choice. So I'm gonna bring my chair close to the mat and I am going to step forward with my left foot. So I'm keeping my left hand on my chair and I've got my left knee bent and it's lined up over my left foot. My right foot is behind me. My right leg is straight. I'm gonna bring my right arm up, point up to the ceiling. As I slowly bring it down, I'm straightening my left leg and bending my right leg and bowing. And then I'm reversing the entire process, come back to the starting position. And you just go back and forth at your own rhythm. If you can coordinate your breathing so that you're exhaling down and inhaling up, that's a fine thing, but it's not life-threatening if you can't manage that. When you've had enough of that, just bring your arm down, step forward, shake out your legs, take a deep breath. Good, and let that go. So now, we want our right hand on the chair because we're going to step forward with our right foot, lining up our right knee over our right foot. Bring your left arm up, 
look at the ceiling. As you come down, straighten your right leg, bend your left leg, and go back and forth. And once again, if you can coordinate your breathing to coincide with the movement, that's lovely. And when you've had enough, you just bring your arm down, step forward, and shake out your legs. Take time for a little shoulder wiggle. Take a breath. Okay, good. So let's do the eagle. So we're putting our feet right back into Tadasana, and we're going to let our arms swing. Now, if you are unable to bring your palms together, you have a nice alternative, and that is just rest your palms on your opposing shoulders. But when you're ready, it's one elbow under the other, and there we are, the eagle. Now, when you're ready, you can raise your elbows a bit. Feel the big stretch across the trapezius muscle, across the top of your shoulders. And if you want, you can push your hands away from your face. If you wish, you could bring your face to the left, arms to the right, and then vice versa. And when you're ready to come out of it, we simply unpretzel, let your arms swing, and let the blood return to your hands. And then we'll do the other way around. So now it's the other elbow on top. The stretch feels a little different this way. Once again, you can raise your elbows. If you like, you can push your hands away from your face. You can move your face to the right, arms to the left. Hmm, I'm backwards. Oh well. And then to the other side. When you're ready to come out of it, Unpretzel, let your arms swing a bit, shake out your legs, let them know that that's over. And let's get our chair engaged here. We're going to do our, uh, we're going to strengthen the muscles at the top of our thighs, the abductor and the adductor. So stand next to your chair, your left hand is on the chair, you're going to be standing on your left leg. Take your right straight leg, cross it over the front of your left leg then off to the side, and then behind your left leg, off to the side and in front. You're just going to keep doing that little motion over and over again. The challenge here is when you go to the right, don't let your toes turn to the right, because then you are working the wrong muscle. There's a very particular muscle that we're interested in when we do this. So if you allow your toes to wander off, It defeats the entire purpose of doing this. So form counts. When you're ready to quit, put your right foot down, shake out your left leg, take a nice breath. <sighs> Give everything a nice wiggle, and we'll set up for the other side. So this time I've got my chair on my right. My right hand is on my chair. I'm standing up straight and tall. I pick up my left leg, Bring it in front of the right, out to the left, behind the right, out to the left, in front of the right. And I just slowly go back and forth. The same caution about your left toes applies. Don't let them wander off to the left. Keep them facing forward.
right. When you're ready, just put that leg down, shake out both legs, take a breath, give everything a little wiggle. Good, let's do the clock. So we don't need a chair for this. So we're gonna put our feet back. It can be in Tadasana or not, because you're gonna be bending your knees to do this. Put your hands on your hips, push your hips forward for 12, to the right for three, back for six, to the left for nine, 12, three, six, nine, 12, three, six, nine. Now connect the dots and make it smooth. You can start with a little bitty circle. You can make it larger. Good. Come back to center. Now this time it's gonna be 12, nine, six, three. 12, nine, six, three. And you can connect those dots with a nice smooth circle. And if you'd like, you can start small and get bigger. If you're interested, you can start large and get smaller. It's up to you. Excellent, okay. We'll come back to center, we'll shake out our legs, take a deep cleansing breath. Now, as usual, I'm going to be back here. Today is Friday, so I'll be back here on Monday, 10 o'clock. But don't forget, tune in to the YouTube channel, Woodland Pond, if you want to do this some other time. I wish you the best of the weekend. Namaste. So, for the folks who are willing to get down on the floor, we're going to get down on the floor. We're going to start in tabletop. Uh, this prized pos position. Okay, so our hands are under our shoulders, our knees are under our hips, and we are going to do a few cat and cow stretches. Head down, belly up. Belly down, head up. And just go back and forth with this excellent stretch. This is the kind of stretch that you see your pets doing. Cats are well known for this. Then come back to center, head and hips to the right, center, head and hips to the left, center, head and hips to the right. We are wagging our tail. There we go. Now take your right bent knee to the right to hip height and down left bent knee to the left and down back to the right back to the left good so now we're going to do our triple header we're going to put together three distinct poses we're going to do the plank the dolphin and downward facing dog i'm going to do a quick demo but let me tell you that the plank and the dolphin are more difficult than downward facing dog. If you have trouble doing either the plank or the dolphin, no problem. Just do downward facing dog, you're fine. The thing to be caution, cautious about with dolphin is it is a back bend. So if your back does not like a back bend, Skip the dolphin, just do the plank and downward facing dog. The idea is to do each pose once, hold it as long as you can, making it the most perfect posture you, you can do before you move on to the next posture. When you're done, you touch your knees down, go into child pose. So this is what the three postures look like. We start in tabletop. To do plank, take one leg back, the other leg back, lower your butt slightly, pick up your head slightly, and there you are. To do a dolphin, you drop your pelvis to an inch off the floor, look up in the back bend, and then downward facing dog, you'll probably need to bring your feet forward and then push your chest as far back towards your knees as you can. Keep your elbows straight. So. 
feel free to start the posture whenever you wish. And I certainly hope you're breathing the whole way. When you shift from one pose to the other, it's entirely up to you. It depends in great deal on the strength of your shoulders and your personal stamina. When you've done as much as you want to do, touch your knees down, big toes together, knees apart, forehead on the floor. Unless, of course, you have knee issues or sinus issues, if that's the case, just roll over onto your back, pull your knees up onto your chest. When you reach your resting posture, Make sure to take a couple of nice deep breaths to help you settle into the posture and begin to relax all those muscles that have just been working very hard. Your body is now rushing blood and lymph into those muscles to both cleanse them of waste products like lactic acid and to bring in glycogen and glucose to feed them. So it's time for the next thing on the agenda. I'm going to we're going to be sitting on the floor. So if you have a nice cushion or zafu, this is a good time to get it out. <laughs> oh, life is interesting. Okay, all righty. So we're gonna be doing some stretching for our back and legs. So if you want, you can be up on your zafu, but some knees will not be happy with this. So if that's the case, you're better off with your butt on the floor rather than a zafu or you can stick bricks or a rolled up mat or something else under your knees. So here we are, we're gonna sit up nice and straight and tall and we're going to go for the toes, but don't go down like a noodle. Keep your head and chest up and begin to lean forward. We would like to get a lot of the stretch to come out of our hips. And of course, that won't happen if we put our head and chest down too soon. And of course, we cannot snap into a stretch. We have to be patient. So don't rush it. I keep going down a little bit more with each breath. Good. I can really feel it across the back of my legs. So I think it's time for me to put my head and chest down. That intensifies the stretch. If you would like, many people like to reach out for their toes and pull ever so gently. Don't overdo a good thing. Other folks prefer interlacing their hands behind their head and dropping their elbows. Both options are quite effective. Keep breathing comfort and encouragement into those stretching muscles. Do relax your neck. That'll help stretch a different part of your back. We hold so much tension in our backs. 
This motion is fabulous for helping us release it. When you've been here as long as you want to be here, simply begin to slowly sit up. As usual, give everything a nice wiggle, take a breath. Ah, and let everybody return to normal. Now, I'm coming off my Zafu because we're going to do the wide-legged stretch. Let's see, which one do we want to do? Hmm. I think we're going to do this one. So what we're going to do is we're going for our right foot, but we're going to try and get our pelvis to face our left foot pretty tricky, I know, but that's what we're going to do. Then take your right arm, put it on the floor next to your right leg, palm up. If you can sneak a thumb or a finger under your right leg, that's great. Otherwise, now, it's tempting to lean forward so that your right, your, I'm sorry, your left shoulder is coming forward, and, but we don't want that. We would like your left shoulder to go back toward the ceiling and your left arm comes up over your left shoulder and leans toward your right foot. And there we are. Breathe into the stretch. It's a huge stretch up and down your left side. You're looking at the wall, not the floor. Breathing into it. And see if you can encourage your muscles to stretch a little bit more so that your left hand can make a millimeter's progress towards your right toes. So, in fact, this is not a really static position. You're constantly moving very slowly, like a glacier, towards your right toes. And when you've had enough of this, just take your left arm back and sit up. <sighs> Lean back on your hands for just a second. Take a breath. <sighs> Let that go. <sighs> Good. So now, see if you can turn your pelvis a little bit to face your right foot. It's not going to be huge, just a little. Okay. Left arm goes onto the floor next to your left leg. And if you can sneak your hand under there, fine. Now, once again, look at the wall over there, not the floor, so that your left arm and left, I'm sorry, right shoulder can come back toward the ceiling. Bring your right arm up overhead and continue to look at the wall as you bring your right arm up and over and head towards your left toes. Once again, it's a very slow motion. Feeling the big stretch up and down your right side, breathing comfort into those muscles as you very slowly work your way towards your left foot. If you can see your right arm, see if you can move it a little closer to the ceiling and back. Keep breathing. When you're ready, begin to bring your arm up. Sit back for a few seconds. Take a breath. Good. Give everything a nice wiggle. Let that work and effort go. Okay, so what should we do next? Hmm. I think some hip openers would be in order. Let's do... We're going to do the half pigeon. So lay down. I have to get rid of this. Your feet are flat on the floor. Your arms are alongside. Pick up your right ankle, put it on your left knee, put your right hand on your right knee, push it away, let it rebound. Push it away, let it rebound. 
Good. Now take your right hand in between your thighs, left hand outside your left thigh. Even though your right ankle is still there, pick up your right thigh, I'm sorry, left thigh, interlace your hands behind your left thigh, and there you are, the half pigeon. Now, you should be feeling a massive stretch in your left, or I'm sorry, right cheek. I'm having a brain day. Ugh. So, we can intensify the stretch if we want by pulling our left thigh closer, by rolling a tiny bit to the left, or by extending our left leg to the ceiling. Choose any of those three variations that work best for your body and enjoy. Breathe into your left, I'm sorry, right cheek <laughs> and feel the stretch. When you're ready to come out of it, all you have to do is slowly release your hands your left foot comes to the mat, your right foot comes to the mat. Put your left ankle on your right knee, push your left knee away, let it rebound. And go back and forth for a few times. So take your left hand between your thighs, right hand outside your right thigh. Pick up your right thigh, interlace your hands behind it, and there you are. But again, I invite you to use the little variations to maximize the stretch, either pulling your leg closer, rolling a tiny bit to your right, or extending your right leg to the ceiling. The last variation doesn't do much for me, so I never bother to use it, but that's me. So if it's good for you, I hope you'll use it. When you're ready to come out of it, all you have to do is let your hands release, your right leg comes down, and your left leg comes down. Good. So, what we're about to do is something we don't usually do, but it's quite good. It's another power move, and it's called the inverted tabletop. So, you'll need to roll to one side to come up to a seated position. So once we get here, we need to put our feet flat on the floor, hip width apart. And they're about a foot away from my butt. And I'm gonna put my hands behind me, roughly shoulder width apart, with my fingers pointing away from me. Now, if you have wrist issues, this is not a posture for you. I suggest that you do the bridge instead. As you know, the bridge, you're laying flat and you're tucking your pelvis up. So, it, both postures, either the inverted tabletop or the bridge, are fine postures. Pick the one you like. All right, so to do the inverted tabletop, all I'm going to do is I'm going to pick up my hips and bring them up to knee level, and I'm going to put my head back and I'm going to hold the posture. Here we go. Stay as long as you like, but when you're ready, all you have to do is put your butt on the floor and you're done. So, Give your shoulders a wiggle. Take a deep breath. <sighs> Good. We're gonna do another posture that we don't usually use, and it's called the camel. Now the camel is a great posture for a back bend. 
So you're gonna come up onto your knees and you're going to stick your toes under. So you curl your toes under. And then you're gonna take your left arm and with your hand, reach around behind you and see if you can find your left heel. Good. Now, you can bring your right arm up to the ceiling and look at it. This is the half camel. When you're ready, you bring your right arm down, you come back to center, good. Now take your right arm behind you and fish around behind you, looking for your left, I'm sorry, right heel. Bring your right arm up, look at the ceiling, breathe. You'll feel a nice stretch up your left side. Again, this is the half camel. If you wanna do the full camel, which I cannot do, you put both hands back on your heels at the same time, look at the ceiling and breathe, which I am not going to do. So let's lay down again. Bring your knees up onto your chest, give them a hug, take a few deep breaths, <sighs> and feel how lovely it is to let your back round after a back bend. It's a wonderful feeling. We can augment that wonderful feeling simply by bringing our hands to the mat and drawing circles on the ceiling with our knees together. Our bones are pressing into our flesh and it feels lovely. Don't forget to go in both directions with your circle. And then bring both feet to the floor, stretch out your left leg, bring your right knee up, grasp it with both hands, pull it towards your chest on the exhale, let it rebound on the inhale, and go back and forth at your own rhythm. I'm convinced that every person has their own rhythm. It's reflected in the speed with which they walk, the speed with which they sing and talk, etc. And it probably has a lot to do with your the pace of your heart and lungs as well. So bring your left leg up, transfer your hands to your left knee, put your right foot on the floor, stretch it out straight, and continue your breathing with your left leg. Righty, so now it's time for deep relaxation. So it's time to find your jackets, your sweaters, your blankets, your socks, whatever you're going to need to stay warm, plus the cushions that you might need to be comfortable. So make yourself as comfortable as possible and then put yourself in a posture that you find comfortable, whether it's laying in the classic dead man pose, or with your lower legs in the seat of a chair, or with your feet on the floor and your knees bent and resting against each other. These are all, or lying on your side. All of these are excellent postures for resting. When you get into your posture, be sure to close your eyes and take a couple of nice deep breaths to help your body let go.
we have worked, we have achieved, we have stretched, we have strengthened. Now it's time to rest, but we can't rest unless we let go. If we try to rest without letting go, we are maintaining tension and that is very stressful. So let's take inventory of our face and see how we're doing. How is your brow? Is it furrowed? Convince it to relax. How are the muscles around your eyes? Are you squinting? Persuade those muscles to let go. Are your teeth touching your, each other? See if you can relax your jaw sufficiently so there's a little bit of space between your teeth. And just proceed in a similar manner throughout your body, looking for groups of muscles that have not yet laid the burden down. and just try to succumb to gravity's pull. When we stand in Tadasana, we are defying gravity. But now, we want to surrender. So now it's time to wiggle your fingers, wiggle your toes, begin to make any loosening movements that will feel good before we roll to one side to come up to a seated position. And once we get here, we can put our hands together in prayer position, sit up straight and tall, close our eyes, lower our heads, and give thanks for this day. Then lifting our heads and opening our eyes, we can say, Namaste. May your weekend be excellent. I'll see you back here Monday morning, 10 a.m. <laughs>